The wayfinding landscape is changing, so welcome to Endpoint's Wayfinding Exchange podcast. We want to connect with leading experts, tech innovators, and key contributors to exchange knowledge and innovation in physical and digital wayfinding. We want to shape the future of wayfinding through discussion, collaboration, and shared expertise. And this is why we have created this podcast series. Enjoy the episode. So hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Wayfinding Exchange podcast. We thought we'd explore something a little different this week and about as far removed from wayfinding technology as you can get. With me is Mark Josling, a long-time collaborator of Endpoint and one of the best traditional sign writers in the business. Mark's business is called Spectrum Signs, which he started back in 1988. So he's got over 35 years of experience. He doesn't look that old. Uh, <laughs> creating beautiful hand painting signs and traditional gold leaf lettering for all sorts of clients from local pubs to the film industry. We'll put lots of links. It's, obviously, it's quite a visual medium, but we'll put lots of links in the descriptions for Mark's work and other sources. So, yeah, Mark, thanks for coming in. And um, I guess, yeah, let's try and start from the beginning. How the hell did you get into um, sign writing? What's your journey and why are you doing it? <laughs> Uh, I first sort of became interested in it before I left school. I had a careers teacher said to me, you know, what would you like to do when you leave? And I mentioned traditional sign writing. And I was told in, that would have been 1979, that it's a dying trade mm. and, and not to go down that road. So that put me off straight away. What do you think you attracted to that? Was your family in it or you just no, had an I, artistic sort yeah, of Yeah, I'd, I'd just seen someone doing it in the street and... Became a little bit curious, looked into it a tiny bit, and then, like I say, got put off it straight away. So yeah. I've always enjoyed copying things. Art was probably my best subject at school, but I was never one to sort of paint pictures and stuff. I liked copying the artwork from some of my favourite bands. Yeah. Um, you know, so the letter styles of the jam and the clash and that sort of stuff back in the day. Brilliant. <laughs> and always, always sort of been fascinated by that and had a, had a bit of an eye for reproducing stuff by looking at it, you know. And that, that careers teacher didn't sort of. <laughs> push you in the direction of graphic design or probably commercial art it was probably called back then no not at all it just really put me off sign writing and um <laughs> thanks uh, yeah but it, it it might have been for the better because i went and did a few other jobs that were not really suitable so probably five or six years later i saw a semi-retired sign writer in tenerife funny enough he'd led some vans locally and i just asked him about it and i sort of got back and, and thought, I wonder whether that's worth looking into. Mm. And consequently, I found the sign work course that was at Hammersmith and West London College. Okay. And at the time, I was working in the post office. So I'd had enough of that. And I thought, well, it's now or never almost, you know, mm. which talking about that now seems ridiculous at 21, but it did seem like that. So I enrolled for that, which was like a full-time course. So you're going from earning reasonable money at the post office to earning next to nothing mm. i just about managed to get a grant for doing uh, that for a year did mm. that and then and then sort of applied to a few firms and, and got taken on, on almost as you know like an apprentice again does that does that i mean do you know if that course still exists or is that um no up until a few years ago there was a place uh, a college in warsaw that did it know, where but i'm in, from really is yeah. that right yeah i don't know if that's still the case the only place i think that does it now is um the college at cork in ireland i think right. they still do it but what you've got now you've got it's less structured you've got lots of traditional sign writers offering yeah. one and two day courses and that sort of thing some of them are really really good others perhaps not so good <laughs> yeah I'm trying to be diplomatic but yeah so i mean just so people understand this idea of traditional sign writing, i mean what sort of things what sort of techniques what sort of how would you classify traditional sign writing well certainly with paint and a brush okay that's that's yep. the first thing but i think our first the first ever thing we did at college was a series of shapes that we drew up with probably set square and a compass and stuff like that and um we were just taught how to thin the paint and we were just so to sort of transfer that onto a board and, and fill the shapes in pretty much yeah yeah and then as that progressed you would you do various signs that were part of the college course yeah. towards your Sydney and Guilds. 
So it was a, it was a City and Guilds qualification. City and Guilds qualification, wow, yeah. Okay. How times have changed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just for people who don't know, I mean, basically it is the art of painting letter forms by hand. Yeah. I mean, sometimes there's a bit of a template. There's loads of techniques to template it up, isn't there? But sure. I mean, yeah. Having seen you work on, on site and all the different ways of doing it. But then it's literally by hand, all the outlines filling in. Yeah, and it, it it is a it's a craft, isn't it? There's nothing really computerized about applying that paint to the wall or the van or or no, or the computerized side is your drawing or your template. Yeah, that's produced from artwork provided, like Endpoint yeah. do. Yeah. Or various companies they'll send you artwork. You use a plotter. So uh, do you scale that artwork up then? To yeah, the, scale to the artwork up. Size. Sometimes it's it's there for you, you know, you just import it into your sign program and, and mm. use your plotter to um to make a pounce pattern. Yeah. Which is a series of holes. Yeah, that's what I've seen you do. So yeah. Like little dots around the that's outline it. of the letters. You put that on the wall and it's is it chalk? You, you or put something? either chalk or charcoal depend depending on what surface, what colour surface you're going on yeah. to. And then yeah, just Paint by numbers, really fill in the dots. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound so easy. <laughs> it easy. It's really <laughs> difficult. It's really difficult. So, go back to your, your, your story. So, you left college and you know you found a job in the sign industry. Then, and what year was that? Are people still is sign writing still the way of doing it? Yeah, it still. Was, it was. It was at a time when the first sign making computers were coming in. So the, okay. um, the spandex and the is it the Gerber. Yeah, four B or whatever Gerber it was. Machine. Yeah, I saw a Gerber. I suppose after I'd been at my firm, which was uh, Phelps Publicity in in Wembley, sort of northwest London. They'd been going for years, and I got there at a very good time for me, in that they only had a couple of sign writers. And once I'd sort of illustrated that I could put a pattern up and and you know fill in the lines and to a reasonable standard, they let me do a lot of stuff. So. I, I had years, two years probably of practice doing Roman lettering, block lettering. I used to moan at the time because the money was terrible and it was a bit repetitive. But looking back, it was a real good, real good sort of grounding, you know, yeah, real, yeah. real good experience. 10,000 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and later on when you come to doing, you know, when you go on site and you snap a couple of chalk lines on and you're, you're doing freehand stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that's sort of up there, you know, you've got that. Do you, you, do you do that? Do you do a lot of that freehand stuff? A lot of it, yeah, yeah, a lot of it, yeah. I mean, back, you know, back in the day, sort of, since paint was invented to, you know, computer cut vinyl, I mean, there'd, there'd be thousands of guys, girls doing hand form lettering for, you know, shopkeepers and, yeah. and, and guys with vans and, mm. you know, big, big brands. I mean, any advertising or any sort of what we call signage these days, you know, it's literally done by hand by sign writers it was a it would have been a massive industry there'd be thousands yeah. of people doing it oh definitely yeah yeah because it was i suppose it was the only way to do it wasn't it at one yeah. stage yeah you know years ago you used to sort of just turn up on site you'd go and sign write a face you would take your trestles along it and you wouldn't really know what you're doing until you got there amazing that's where the sort of skill came into it and now it's that doesn't happen so often yeah on certain things it does i, I do quite a lot of um pub work now so mm -hmm. a couple of companies that i work for you turn up on site and you meet a designer, turns up at 9.30, because that's what they do. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, welcome to our world. <laughs> yeah, you're there at 7 thinking, right, I need to get done, and they turn up at 9.30 after dropping the kids off. But, yeah, you, you're sort of told that, you know, you need toilets this way, beer garden, mm. etc. You don't really know sizes and styles, and you'll find that out on the day. Yeah. So that's where that all comes in handy. So and that, That's a real skill, you know, you've got fixed size of an yeah. area and you've got to fit a message in there without looking at it on a computer or working out type mm. sizes it's it's incredible to watch i suppose that's where the experience comes in it's yeah. just sort of it's it's stored somewhere up there and it, you know you just try and do the best you can in the yeah. time you've got but a lot of it is um projects from designers and it's predetermined artwork so you've just got to try and yeah. You know, replicate you want to, it at scale yeah i suppose some of the challenges then are the surfaces and the sometimes the access sometimes the conditions you know yeah going back to college what i mean what year was that when you left college with your sign writing <laughs> brushes so that that was i think it was about 81 82 okay so you got you went into the sign industry and the the sort of vinyl. No, I wasn't sorry, I've, I've lied there that was um that was eight, <laughs> about 85 sorry 85, 85 okay yeah, yeah okay yeah 
so the industry's changing technology's sort of coming in yeah you know there's i guess illuminated signs people are fabricating mm. metal signs and then there's there's this thing called vinyl and vinyl cutters yeah. which i guess was the you know that was the sort of death knell in a way to a lot of traditional sign writing you do it on a computer computer cuts it out in a color guy goes and sticks it on a wall i i mean it was it was a massive thing for our industry but mm. especially the traditional side of it we first saw one after i'd been working at phelps for about a year i think and i remember remember to this day we all looked at it and said i'll oh, never catch on <laughs> <laughs> can't do what we can do yeah <laughs> but um yeah, for a lot of sign writers, you know, that were about then, I know lots of them that stopped, that mm. just stopped sign writing. Yeah. And I had to, I had a choice really, not so much then, but a few years later, sort of after I'd left and gone on my own, that I, I had to either embrace it or, or, or just get another job really, mm. because probably not overnight, but it felt like it, 70% of your work disappeared. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, or, or it didn't necessarily disappear. You still perhaps had the clients, but you had to do it in vinyl. Mm. You know, was not... it was it like? I mean, new technology is normally really bloody expensive. I mean, <clears throat> was, was the the price was a factor? Was it, or was it just they like the crispness and the evenness, and it was just a rejection of that sort of handcrafted look? I suppose there were lots of things. It, it was it was turnaround time was 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 a big thing, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and if you wanted a cheap shop face, you, you've got your substrate, you've got your vinyl. Uh, we were painting stuff. So if mm. someone rang up and they ordered a, a sign, you had to, you know, put your four coats of paint on it, five coats of paint, mm. you know. And with vehicles, it was massive with vehicles. That disappeared. The only vehicles now that I hand letter would be vintage vehicles. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it, it doesn't seem any point because, number one, people don't want their vans off the road for long. Mm. And number two, it just it ruins the resale value. Yes, I guess the vinyl's easier yeah. to remove, and it's so much easier. I, I still do vinyl. I still um, do a lot of vehicles, and I've got a chap that helps me out with that. I design a lot of the stuff, but I don't apply it so much yeah. now, which is the best bit, really. But you've got the vehicle templates, you've got emails, you can, yeah. you know, you don't have to sit there with a pencil and a rubber and some, you know, some <laughs> color pens and show them how it's going to look. It's instant, and yeah, it's yeah. You, you know. So, and it's a massive business vehicle, the Yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. From massive brands to every man and his dog who's got a, a, mm. a white van guy has usually got something on the side of it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's huge. Mm. And and those vinyl businesses, the 3Ms, the Avery, mm. they, they're massive companies. Yeah, enormous, yeah, yeah. But what comes around goes around, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. it's like a lot of these things, like vinyl records, you know, they, technology yeah, comes bad, along, yeah. they, they suddenly like defunct and... No one's talking about it. And then suddenly it's like, oh, you know, there's still that love for that, that analog world. So you, but what, what happened to you? So you, you, you carried on in the sign industry. Yeah. Did you keep your hand in or did you fully commit to like the new technology? No, I was lucky because, um, certain things that I did couldn't really be done in vinyl. So we still do a lot of honors boards. Okay. For those, the majority of them, you're having to match what was done before. Yes. So you can't go into an honors board that's got 20 names on it, 30 names on it, 100 names on it, and then suddenly start doing it in vinyl or doing mm. it in, in a, with a computer mask. So I kept those jobs. You know, some of the jobs, the golf clubs and bowls clubs and stuff, I still do now. Wow. So, you know, I kept that. And the other two things I did a bit of was, one was plant machinery, but the very big stuff, which wasn't the most enjoyable, but, you know, like big corrugated cabins and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was just, it was just easier to sign, right? Yeah. And the third thing that I did a bit of, I don't do so much now, was um, some TV and film work, you know, for stuff where they need it to look, like period, period dramas and stuff. and um, Anything we'd know? Yeah, I, I, I did some work for Miss Marple, something that Victoria would, was in. Yeah, there was a few. I can't think of many Amazing. of them off, off the top of my head. Every now and then that come up now. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I used to quite enjoy doing that. That, that was all right. But for Brilliant. one reason or another, I don't do so much of that now. So what's, I mean, what's happened in the business then? Obviously you're, and I, I know we, we keep you fairly busy. I mean, most of the jobs we've been doing over the last few years is there's, there's, there's usually some element of handwritten sign writing. You know, our designers love it. And I, I mean, you look everywhere on Instagram and TV and there's, there's even, you know, there's lots of sort of craft shows where there's guys gold leafing, you know, plying their trades almost become an art form to to some people. I mean, have you seen it? Have you seen the popularity 
increase over the last few years? Massively, yeah. I would say probably 10 or 12 years ago was when you first noticed it. Right. And I don't quite know exactly why, but I think one of the reasons is because of the internet, people can find it. You can find anything now. Whereas before that was a thing, I think people just assumed it was dead. Yeah. So that's one thing. And also you've got a lot of designers now that seem to want it. I know for us it's, um, yeah, there is this idea of nostalgia and authenticity mm. and craft. A lot of our designers are from a, a typographic education and, you know, that very much used to be a craft and they a lot of them still think of it in terms of craft, even though they're doing everything on computer. But, yeah, they're still hand kerning and, yeah, you know, looking at um, those relationships between letters. So then taking that to the next level for us in terms of environmental Mm. graphics it's like oh they all want to do it and I've, I've been in the position where it's like oh you know that's no, really expensive or it's this or it's that and the reality is for a lot of jobs it's it's actually a really good choice because yeah. vinyl peels off people pick it off it has its limitations and you know the beauty and the almost sometimes the imperfection of yeah. hand stuff gives it a, a, you know that beautiful quality yeah i think sometimes when you're working on like a painted surface it makes sense to put paint on top of it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the alternative, which you say is vinyl, that, I mean, the, the vinyl that they've produced now that you can heat in to rough brick walls and stuff, it looks yeah. very good. Yeah. But then if you think you've still got to pay for someone's labour to put it up and you've still got to pay for the material itself, which isn't cheap, yeah. you might as well. I don't know if there's much in it, but I know we've we've gone against people in price and, and they, you know, the designers or the company have said, you're cheaper than the, the yeah. vinyl people, or, you, or you're competitive at least. You know? Well, we, we, we have that all the time. You know, we, we, we suggest to clients, mm. you know, we'll get a sign writer and we'll do it by hand. Or, you know, we, you did a job recently for us, for us, didn't you, down at um, uh, Lombard Street. Oh, yeah, that was a nice job. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, like, you know, it's beautiful old bank with a big, you see the vaults yeah, there. Yeah, it's a lovely in, place, in, yeah. In, in the bottom. And mm. it's um, it's like, oh, let's, you know, let's, we can do some gold leaf and da, 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 And the client's like, oh, gosh, that sounds really expensive. <laughs> And it's like, well, you know, actually, if you did, we did some b big environmental graphics, didn't we, down in mm. the basement. Mm. It's like, you know, to do that in vinyl, yeah, measure it, all the waste of material that you have with vinyl, you know, it comes on a big roll, you cut a little bit out, you, you chuck a load of it away. So from a sustainability point of view, it's, you know, it's not great. You've still got two or three blokes on site, you yeah. know, put it up, then they mess it up and have to peel it off and do it again. It is super competitive, yeah. and I'd recommend it to anybody out there who um, fancies something a bit more traditional, a bit more old school, with that that element of craft to, to give it a go because it's it's actually not as expensive as I think as people may think it is. It makes sense as well, I think. With you know, when it comes to if you want to change, you haven't got to strip a load of vinyl off the wall, mm. which it could take the background paint off. Yeah. Which happens a lot, and also leaves a load of glue sometimes. It, it leaves a load of glue, yeah. and then you'll get people just painting over the vinyl, which is a no <laughs> disaster. <laughs> but you get that; you see that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so at least with what we're doing, you can just paint over it. So. Absolutely, mm. and it's just it's just beautiful. Tell us a bit about some of the, you know, some of the techniques. If you can, I know it's quite a visual medium, and we're on a podcast. So it's a <laughs> bit difficult to to visualize, but I mean, uh, you know, that last job we were talking about, you did a load of gold leafing, which yeah, we'd never really specified before. And again, it's like, mm, you know, how do you do this? What's the advantages? I mean, just tell us a little bit about. So we did two different things there. One was the um, the surface gilding onto the pillars. Mm -hmm. So really, you just we just used uh, a traditional pounce method. Um, explain pounce pounce yeah so, so just um like i said before it's just a design instead of drawing it on a full-size bit of paper it will punch a load of holes in it okay and then you you put either chalk or charcoal through it on a on a pad mm -hmm. and it, the, the image will be there on the wall or on the painted background that you're going on to yeah and then you sign right as normal with a gold size which is pretty much like a, it's like a varnish um, but you you put a tint of colour into that so you can see where you're lettering and then you have to gauge how long that that is before it just about goes off and then you apply your transfer gold to that which is which is on a background mm -hmm. on a bit of paper almost and you rub that and and the size in theory it will st <laughs> it will stick where you've where you've put your size Right, in practice, okay. sometimes it just sticks everywhere. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And they look great. I mean, yeah. 
again, it's hard to explain, but it's, it was a very traditional sort of 19th century Victorian type building with uh, stonework. Yeah. And, and, and you've, you've done it to the stonework. And I, I guess if we wanted to get rid of that, probably wear away nicely over time, but you probably could get rid of it. Yeah. You know, if, I guess if you, yeah, we just thought it'd be a nice solution. Well, it matched all the other graphics, didn't yeah. it? You had some yeah. uh, nice lift graphics and that, didn't yeah. you? And it sort yeah. of, it all tied in well. Yeah. I mean, I guess a, a lot of people associate with gold leaf with like the, you know, the really traditional pub signs and things yeah. like that. Mm. And that's onto glass. Reverse well, you've got two, glass. yeah, you, you've got glass gilding, which is nearly always done in reverse. Mm -hmm. um, and there's various sort of techniques that can be used. I don't do a great deal of it, but that's done by um water size which is gelatine mixed with water okay um and you flood that on and then you you're picking up loose bits of gold right so it comes in a book still but you have to pick that up with a with a gilder's tip um and and sort of put that under the glass but that's another thing altogether that's that's probably the most difficult thing we do i think yeah, yeah, yeah. from my point of view because i don't do enough of it but it's there's lots of people doing it and it's very yeah. popular and the and so the painting the the hand sign writing I mean what's the sort of you're mainly doing signs sort of fascias vehicles or it's, it's so varied these days I mean like I said a lot of pub work um you sign write the fascia quite yeah. often they're gilded yeah gold leaf and then you do a few internal signs what seems to have come back into fashion was a, a lot of pubs had raised letters cut out letters and stuff yeah. and now they seem to be scrapping them and. So I'm writing onto the directly onto the wall, like a gable end or something yeah. like that, or you know, big it just wall looks areas. So much better, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It can look nice, yeah. Um, but do you think it is a fashion? I mean, do you, are you um, worried that it'll I, I, times I will change again? And I wouldn't be surprised. I think it is a bit of a trend at the moment. But mm -hmm. I think, like I said before, because of the internet and because people can find it, I, I think it's here to stay again. Right. I think there was a danger. There was definitely a danger about twenty years ago that it would become so niche that it would yeah. almost disappear. I mean, I, I just see it on, um, you yeah, know, you get all the mainstream TV programs where they're, I can't remember the name of the shows, but they, they're doing crafts and they repair, yeah. you know, they re, the, oh, like the repair, repair shop, shop stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, there's, yeah. you know, there's a guy I follow who's, I mean, he loves the sign right. He's trying to do it himself. He had a guy in, I can't remember his name, but he his dad used to, you know, run a fairgrounds. Joby Carter. Carter, that yeah, was Joby, it, yeah. I know Joby. Yeah. And, and he still... I mean, that's sort of all he does now. He's, I think yeah. he sold the fair yeah. and he, mm. he just does sign writing courses. No, he runs and, courses. He's very good. Yeah. yeah. No, he knows his stuff. Yeah. And those, those old vehicles where you, you're sort of outlining around windows and, 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 yeah. and the wings and stuff, it does look amazing. Mm. No, people are fascinated by it, but I suppose because I've been doing it for such a long time, <laughs> <laughs> it just feels, no, it just feels very um, mundane to me, but I suppose. There is a fascination, yeah. He's 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 being very modest. <laughs> being very modest. But you you do always get the comment, even now, every every other day when I'm working somewhere, there's not many of you left. Mm. And I say there is, there's loads, and there really is. What's happened, I think, in the last ten years is a lot of youngsters have come into it. Yeah. Which is really good because obviously that means it is gonna it is gonna carry Continue, on. Yeah. We needed that to happen and that's um that's great because not so long ago, well, not so long, twenty years ago. It looked like it was just us old dinosaurs yeah. that were going to, you know, sort of die with it almost. Like I say, I know a lot of people that put their brushes down, never picked them up again. Yeah, yeah. Again, it, I think it's like a lot of these things. I'm from the Midlands and there used to be tons of factories. There'd be loads of skilled guys, tool makers, mm. you know, metal formers on the English wheel and all that sort of stuff. And so all these skills seem to like almost look like they're disappearing. But there is, I think there is an opportunity because I guess you're applying a lot of these skills to you know, particularly like old cars or stuff, which now have got a massive value. So it's like, yeah, you know, there is a, there's almost a market to encourage people to go into and train in those old crafts. Yeah. Whether they, the people are still around to pass on the knowledge, I guess is a different thing. So I guess we've got to try and capture these, these crafts now, or they, you know, people want to do it, but if there's no one to train them, it's, it's going to be difficult, but. Oh, Hopefully we sign right and it's still thriving and No, I think it's good because there's there are a lot of quite a lot of people that I know that are, are running courses. Yeah. Um chap I know called Paul Paul Myers Coffee's got the Sign Painters Academy. Okay. That's um it's a mostly online thing yeah. um, that he's yeah. set up. And he's got years of experience, really good sign writer. Yeah. And that's you know, that's a really good starting point. And then there are more sort of physical courses that you can go and do. It's a good sort of introduction. There's 
there's a lot more help out there than there was when I sort of started. Yeah, yeah, but good. then it's a shame that you haven't got the college course because that was that was really good. Mm, interesting. So, I mean, going back to sort of typography, we've mm. had you know type designers talk on the podcast. You know, so I just find it really fascinating that obviously you've by admission not had any typographical training, but you probably know as much about. Mm forming letters and their relationship and you know how to size something to a to a space yeah and make it either legible or just beautiful than the most graphic designers i suppose the type of graphical training that i had was drawing letters up from scratch at college mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that was really really helpful there's certain rules that mm -hmm. you obviously know about lettering that i wouldn't have known yeah and a lot of people you can see with people that people that have just opened up a vinyl shop that they don't know, yes. you know, and, and, and you see, <laughs> we like, see it all the time. Yeah, I mean, your classic thing is a Roman A or a Roman V that's been put back to front because they don't know where the thick and thins go, mm -hmm. you know. So you see that a lot. But yeah, I, I'm really interested in type. Always have been. Mm -hmm. Part of a sign writer's job is to sort of, perhaps not so much now, but but years ago was to develop their own styles. So each yeah. sign writer would have his own Roman, his own script, his own block, okay. and you could look at it and tell who'd done the job. Amazing. So it's le it's less evident now because you know probably not doing less of that it's, free form stuff yeah now, i guess yeah so it's from patterns a lot of it but going through that you had to develop your own letter styles and stuff mm. so i'm really interested in it i keep threatening to try and i've got a few alphabets that i've i've hand lettered and tried to scan in and, and got to a certain point and just thought oh this is not for me because it's too much like hard work but there's quite a few this is it we get a mashup between um dalton mag and, and you they can they're the guy they're the digital really they're the guys that create typefaces you put on your computer so really yeah, yeah oh right. i need to, make, I need we'll, to speak we'll to them tie yeah. up we'll, yeah. we'll get we'll get you in a room together no, I definitely no that'd be amazing yeah and it's, oh, and it's quite a few of us that have got you, you've got your own styles that are probably quite unique you know they're all, all i've nicked them all from somewhere just looking at stuff really yeah. you know you asked me to write something in script um it would be my own script but it would be plagiarized from someone just some of the stuff I've seen over the years, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. unconsciously almost. You, you see it and, and you, you don't do it like they do it because you just don't. You can't. Yeah. Probably half the time you're not as good as them to be able to render it like they do. But right. you see stuff and you're influenced by that. But it's a shame there's not more of that. But then saying that when we used to do a lot of that, you used to moan about it. <laughs> so, I guess it's like anything, isn't it? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know yeah. you, you look at it when you're not involved and you think, oh, it's amazing. It'd be brilliant to be able to have that skill and wouldn't it be lovely to earn a living yeah. doing that? And then, you know, when you're doing it, I mean, days like today, it's bloody freezing outside. I mean, do you, do you have, you must have some physical limitations on when you can work outside and stuff. Yeah, the older you get, you certainly have. Yeah, I was out, <laughs> I was out on site doing a couple of pub faces in Dalston on Tuesday. Yeah. And it's just, don't want to moan too much, but it's horrible <laughs> because it was one of those days where I looked at the weather forecast and I thought, oh, I might be able to do it, I might not. And I, to get your tower in the back of the van, yeah. trudge up there and all the way up there, it's raining, but you've looked at the weather forecast and thought, well, it's a two-hour break, I'll be able to do it. And it's not nice, but then take the rough with the smooth, oh, don't you? Yeah, you? Yeah, it's yeah, a lovely job. You'll be in, top off getting <laughs> suntan yeah, in the summer, no doubt. Yeah, it's a lovely job in the summer when you, all the jobs you get are inside. <laughs> so what are they? I mean, you've described now that Obviously, there's less of that freeform work yeah. where some proprietor of a shop's just phoning you up and say, yeah. my name's Mr. Marks and Mr. Spencer, can you mm. do me a sign? So now a lot of it is through designers. They've done yeah. some sort of visual mm. and you're, so what, you know, just very briefly, what, what is the, if someone wants to commission you, one of, hopefully there's some designers listen to us and they, <laughs> they wanted to commission you. How's it go? You know, what's the first sort of conversation you have? What, what are you looking for? With a designer, or I mean, we get you get work from designers, or quite a lot. You get them from the big sign company. Okay. So you just send artwork over on a PDF or something, and you just have to try and work a cost out, and, and you sort of take mm -hmm. it from there. And then they'll send you the artwork. And you have to try and break it up into manageable bits, mm -hmm. and then get well, a I know few there's things like um, designers love the Pantone book, which is about a gazillion colours. Yeah. I know with you know some of the sign writing paints that you have to use it's it's just a more limited uh spectrum is it or other ways around that oh we tend to try and ask for rail colors if we can okay um or you know some sort of paint code and normally they're they're fairly thorough with what they want oh yeah uh, yeah yeah <laughs> no that's uh, a, that's a problem we've had you know we've, we've used 
I think we used you on a job a while back, and it was uh, it was it was a metallic. Oh, and the they, metallic they, bronze they, one. They wanted one. a bronze, and yeah. it's like, well, you know, the, what is it? One shot. Is this the special yeah, one oil shot. paints that you yeah. use? That yeah, are, like really robust. I guess they're UV stable. You know, they just last. Yeah, they're pretty years. good. Yeah, and it's like well, there's only a range of thirty colors. You know. So mm. we, we chose this one. They, they, they can be difficult, can't they, designers? But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the most frustrating thing from our point of view can be, you know, a, a designer sitting in front of a screen takes two seconds to press a button and put a shadow on something. But on site, in reality, when you're sign writing over a corrugated surface where your pattern right. won't stick, your paint won't stick, it's a different thing altogether, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And it's a difficult one for us because, like I said earlier, it's nice when you've designed something and it's nice when someone's designed something designed something for you mm-hmm. and it's you can see that you know it's a nice design and it works and yeah. you know you you're really giving the customer something special like perhaps like the lombard street job it was a lovely yeah, design yeah. it was nice it was all you know it was all designed well it looked great but we get so much stuff not from you of course <laughs> <laughs> we get so we get <laughs> so much truth. Stuff. Come on, then. No, 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 right I'm, first time. Honest truth. It? Most yeah. of your stuff is very, very good. Um, but we get stuff sometimes, and it's hard to find an enthusiasm mm. to do it because mm. I'm not a designer, but I am in a way. Yeah, and we all are in a way. All sign writers, you have to be in a way. You know what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, you've got an eye. Yeah, know. definitely. And sometimes you're doing something and you're thinking, I might as well just, I might as well not even be doing this because no one's going to read it. No one's mm. going to see it. It's the wrong typeface for the wrong job. Mm. Just sometimes, I think we all wish that they would ask us a bit more. You know? Okay. Yeah. You know, just collaboration. What do you think? You know? Because <laughs> some, I mean, we've done it in the past. You know, we've, I, I think a lot of it's to do with the, a lot of it's to do with the scale. Like you say, when you're working on a screen, yes. yeah, you yeah. Know, it's all, yeah, yeah, you're just confined by that screen, and actually a typeface, you know, it performs differently. The bigger yeah. you blow it up, you mm. know, those relationships can weird things happen when it's at scale. And then there's there's the physicality of the substrate you're going on to. You know, yeah. Paper's super smooth, it's bright white. We've done stuff with you on on brickwork and there's a type size that you can go to that just because of the roughness of the surface, yeah. it just loses all its legibility. Mm. It's just you know, it looks a bit crap if yeah. it's too small. Um, but you, you must have you must have those issues all the bloody time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, uh, it depends who you're working with. If you've, you know, if if they sort of trust you and and you can say to them that this is never going to work there, yeah. or I've got to adjust it to make it look right. Yeah. Then hopefully, you know, we can all be on the same page. But well, I think that's what we <laughs> love about working with you. It's like because you've got an eye. You know, you turn up to so site whether we've surveyed a a wall or an area or what you know there's like you say there's always the the light switch or the architrave or there's something yeah. on that elevation that you haven't or it's on old buildings nothing's plumb mm. everything's out um yeah you want someone who's got that ability and that eye to sort of okay i've got i've got you what you want here mm. and i'm gonna make it look great for this situation and yeah. it will involve me tweaking things and pulling things in and reducing yeah. things and i think you just have to dare i say it, a lot of designers are very controlling and mm. um y- you have to accept especially with a craft like this yeah that you know again i just i just keep saying the imperfections sometimes are what make you know that's the quality that's that shows that it's hand done you know it shows that there's it's human, you know, those those imperfections yeah. are human. I love that. And if you're not prepared for that, then you shouldn't really be using a sign right. I'm exactly. not saying we can't, you know, we can make it look like yeah, yeah. you show it on the screen, but you've got to be prepared for that. Otherwise, mm. you might as well use digital, like a wallpaper or something yeah, like that yeah. on a wall, yeah, you know. Yeah. And sometimes that is the right solution. Oh, definitely. Know? I um, agree with that, yeah. Yeah, we've been doing, especially, we, we were doing some work a while back. It's like, oh, you know, if it's photographic, mm. If you're using large photographic images, then it's a different level for you guys, I guess. Yeah, that's almost yeah. impossible. Yeah. Um, and what? Well, so, what do you see? Um, I mean, you know, you're still looking very fit and healthy, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the What's the next ten it's years? Forty yards like? away from me, then, the other side <laughs> of the studio. <laughs> I guess from a technological point of view, 
you know, there might be another. I mean, there has been revolutions. We've gone through the mm. vinyl revolution. We're now in the like sort of digital print, direct to media yeah. sort of revolution. Applying graphics to stuff like, never seems to cease. It's relentless. Mm. But I mean, you're just going to stick to the your traditional craft based stuff. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I mean, if if I if I could sort of choose and and I didn't sort of have to earn <laughs> earn so much money, I I, I would just. Love to be in my workshop every day, just just doing my own stuff, you know, just doing stuff where someone would say, you know, you design it, you sign write it. That would be great, but it's not really practical. We always ask a question oh, about the future, and yeah, you know, do you do you see anything, any big changes? You just hope the trend carries on, and yeah, I'd like to see it continue, and I think it will because there's some really good younger people in it now. You know, they've got some real talent. So I think it will from that sort of point of view. That's what I was going to say, actually, thinking about it. Is myself and quite a few others, we're not too precious about um, it all being 100% um, technology-free, which mm. these days is mad. There's a lot of people that, you know, they don't even like using tape right. for lettering, you know, or they, they're they against, not so much against using a full-size pattern drawn on a computer, but they wouldn't. For instance, if there's a job that has to be painted, the easiest way to do it or the most sensible way to do it is to use a mask. We'll use a mask. Right. If we can. Yeah. yeah. Often we'll take we'll take a mask and a jaw into a job. Yeah. Because sometimes your mask's not going to work because you know it's going to it's going to rip all the background up. Yeah. But we're lucky in that we've got the ability to if it doesn't work, we can sign right. So just to explain to people, a mask <coughs> it would be like a basically like a vinyl. You use a low tax stencil vinyl. pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So it cut you you've cut out the thing that you want to paint yeah so you stick this to the wall That's and then you paint within the within the mask peel it off mm. i mean invariably what happens with a mask you don't usually leave a very crisp line no but that that's where your then hand skill comes yeah. in because you just go around that that outline with your little brush yeah and it looks flipping perfect again i've seen that many times it's amazing yeah but you do that because it's just um if they're well, big stuff it's just a more efficient way of it's a, it's getting the efficient. color on and there's no point in being precious about it because if a designer wants a design on a wall mm. and it's got to be painted and that, that they don't necessarily want the hand done look, it just needs to be paint on a wall. Right. Why wouldn't you use a mask? Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I would say, yeah, you know, yeah, um, yeah. unless they say, look, we want, we want it to be hand done. We want slight imperfections in it or, or you can't do it that way. Cause often you can't, often it's, it's impossible. Very hard to put a mask, perhaps doing small text on a rough wall. Yeah. You might as well forget it because you'd, you'd do that and you'd be touching it up yeah, for three days, you know, it'd be a waste of time. So, but you do get people that are a bit precious about it. And I think it's, I mean, if you've got the time to stand doing a <laughs> hand lettering something for three days, you know, we, we tend to be in the, in the commercial world a bit more where we have yeah. to get stuff done. But I think that's the beautiful thing in it. Cause it, uh, whilst we <clears throat> talk about the craft and the skill yeah. and hand, the, the, the hand finishing of it all, you got a job to do, we're you still, know, you got yeah, to do that job and then you got to get to the next job. So it's, it's, well, it's commercial and definitely. I think that's how it's always been in sign right. I it? think like it has, yeah, going ago. back years. I mean, yeah. we were just considered to be another trade, like a carpenter, yeah. you know, electrician, uh, painter, all, all, all these sort of, all the, you know, a cabinet, trade. cabinet maker, we are a trade. And when we go yeah. to, you know, you go to a building site or something, you can't be precious about it. You've mm. got your hard hat on and all, all that. You're treated the same as everybody else, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, which is right, which is how it should be, really. You're just coming to do a job. Hopefully, hopefully you're in at the end of the job where it's all, ni <laughs> it's all nice and ready for you. There's <laughs> no you're, dust. Yeah. Well, no dust. And we've been to jobs, believe me, we've been to jobs where don't worry about the wall being painted ready for us. The wall hasn't even been built. Mm. <laughs> You know, yeah, we have just, that all the time. It's yeah. like, you know, it's, you know, decorators are the last guys to leave. It's like, no, they're not. You know, we, we need to apply yeah. our stuff to a decorated yeah. wall. Yeah. And it needs to be dry. We did a job years ago. Um, I won't say what client it was, but it, it was having a, it was having a royal opening. Mm. And, you know, the royal was turning up at 10 o'clock in the morning. And, and I mean, all I can say is the royals must think everywhere smells of paint. <laughs> it was just chaos yeah so literally wire, half yeah. an hour before uh, she's turning up yeah yeah there's decorators cleaning up and it just stinks and we're putting the last little bits up it's stressful and chaotic but brilliant yeah like we try, we try and sort of if we're doing those bigger projects we always try and phone ahead and say right we're doing the sign right is everything ready for us mm. 
and you might as well not bother. Oh, you know, no, so no. Project it, managers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get you. Get it's you. already for you. Yeah. And you get there and say, yeah. why has that not been painted? Why is that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you meant that. Oh, yeah. I thought it was, but still. That's yeah. how it is, man. Yeah, That's you, how it is. You, you, yeah, you've got to expect that, haven't you? Well, um, look, I've really enjoyed speaking to you, finding out a bit more. It's brilliant history, and it's such a wonderful craft that I'm, yeah, I'm glad it's, uh, well, I'm glad you're making a living from it. I'm glad you're still going, and long may it uh, continue. So if, if anyone wants to get in touch, Spectrum Signs, yeah. you got a website? Is that a bit too tech for you? Or? No, I've got a website. I haven't, I, in fact, got a website that hasn't been updated for about 10 years. Oh, a retro website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, spectrumsignsuk.co.uk. Okay. And um, I do a, well, I don't do much now. I got a bit lazy with it, but Instagram at Spectrum Signs, it's about the only okay. social media I do. Brilliant. Um, but I don't do it very much because I don't feel like it's, I like to put my own stuff on there. So yeah. I should, I should post a bit more because I've, you know, done some quite interesting stuff, I suppose, but you just think, oh, it's not worth putting Well, look, if the phone starts ringing off the hook with new work, just remember, yeah. we're the front of the queue, okay? That's, <laughs> yeah, that's trouble is I don't think I've got the capacity for the new work. Yeah. One thing I would say, just before, if we've got time, um, there is a massive community of sign writers, yeah. and the good thing about it nowadays is 95% of us all get on great, you know, mm. there's, there's I know people all over the country. Like if someone gives me a job up in Scotland, I've got blokes up there that I know because yeah. we had this thing called the letterheads. I don't know if you're aware yeah, of that, yeah. but you know, those sign writers sort of get together it happens now and again, but there's a real camaraderie between us all, you know, and it's not, I think when I first started, you went up and asked another sign writer what he was doing. They thought you were trying to nick their work. So yeah. it's very, very different now. So we all try and sort of, you know, try and work together because often, I mean, these projects, some of your projects, mm. like the um, the Lombard Street one, there was five, six of us on it at yeah, one yeah, stage. And they, they're all people I work with all the time. No job's too big. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, long well, mate, continue. Well, thanks. And, yeah. Um, you know, I think you're, you're always in our um, little black book whenever there's, uh, you know, something beautiful and interesting to do, sign written. You're always our first port of call. So uh, thanks no, I appreciate for doing that. this. I've been working for you for years. So. Yeah, and we'll put all your details and links on on the in the descriptions. People will understand it. They'll be able to get in touch with you. But yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Cheers, Mark. Thanks very much. Enjoy the journey back. I yeah, will. Cheers. <laughs> thanks. <laughs>